Welcome back. Well, you know, hospital stocks have been in focus. The Supreme Court, in case you missed out on the news flow, the Supreme Court has directed the centre to set standard healthcare procedure rates within a month. This is because of the bizarre rates that we've seen in the hospital space over the last 12 to 18 months. You would have noticed as well if you needed any medical treatment done. But to discuss the implications of the same and how the business momentum is looking, B.S. Ajay Kumar, the Executive Chairman of Healthcare Global Enterprises, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Mr. Ajay Kumar, thanks a lot for this. Uh, this Supreme Court order on setting standard procedure rates, what do you think the impact of this would be? And if you can just explain to us what this means for the industry now. Yeah, I think uh, we need to study this in depth. First of all, I would like to say it is very important to understand what is happening in Indian healthcare. Today, all over the world, people are touting what is happening in Indian healthcare because of the quality we are giving at a fraction of the cost what it costs abroad. So we have been written up in books, including Harvard Business School and all value-based medicine. When you look at outcome, see, one of the important things which the Supreme Court has not addressed is what should be the outcome. It is cost versus outcome is what we have to look at. When you look at that, India comes on the top. So when we have this, you know, we have to decide how do we price this. So obviously, you know, the value-based medicine, technology being brought, how does it affect? The very fact the Supreme Court has made the this, this statement may itself to some extent affect because why should we bring high technology? Why should we bring talented doctors? Becomes a question. So I think a lot of introspection and even education is needed to the Supreme Court to understand where we are with the healthcare, particularly complicated healthcare, where India is in the forefront today, including in research. So what are the possible answers to this? The answer is really either you bring a universal healthcare, which we have been talking about with no limits, where you know the, the patient is cashless. So that is the crux of the thing. We have to make sure it's cashless for the patient. The industry, the insurance companies, uh, uh, discuss with the hospitals and fix a rate. So that the patient is not put in the middle. Otherwise, if it is not doable, I would like to make a radical statement and say nationalize it. So we will all either go back or do something else. But you know, this kind of uh, statements coming only hurts in terms of quality of care and what we can provide. And we have taken very pride in doing it. 44 uh, you know, uh, uh, business schools study the Indian model to see how this model can be replicated abroad. When we are in such forefront, I don't understand why these rules, why these statements are made. But obviously, this needs a lot of education to everyone, including the justices, to understand what does it mean for a cost? What does it mean for an outcome? There is a cost to low cost. So we really have to look at the quality of the outcome more than the cost. And when you look at that, that is called value-based medicine. We are number one in the world. Oh, sure. Mr. Ajakumar, I get your point that nationalizing of standard procedure rates, of the procedure rates rather, is something that perhaps, you know, should be done. But until that happens, can you tell us? No, once um, it is done, once it yeah. is done, the quality will drop tremendously. Are we prepared for that? And, you know, there are a lot of things. You know, why do people from abroad come to India now? So all of right. this acts with the cost for the services we provide. Got look it. at what happened in the no, drug no, industry. No, for example, the drug industry, they brought down the cost today for my cancer patients, cisplatinum and carboplatinum are not being produced because it's so low cost. Nobody wants to manufacture it. Please understand the consequences of this. Ms. Ajay Kumar, hi. Good morning, Prashant here. No, no, we get the point, absolutely. So, but you would agree that something needs to be done, but it has to be nuanced. I mean, it cannot be just taken down to whatever, uh, uh, you know, the... See, uh, so we'll have to see. We'll have to find something, and I think it'll take time, consultation, uh, some consensus building, etc. I'm sure it'll go down that way. But uh, you know, but the, but the court has also said, if uh, has told the center, if you don't do it in the interim, we will fix rates, uh, and that is the worry for a lot of analysts, uh, a worry for the street. So I just wanted to ask you, how are you looking at it? I mean, if this were to happen, uh, first of all, how would it happen if it were to happen? And uh, what, what would be the implications, financially speaking, for hospitals? I, I personally do not see any major implications financially as far as uh, we are concerned. Because we actually participate in a lot of the schemes. We have uh, done very well 
and we have uh, worked with uh, industries such as uh, CGHS, ECHS, and uh, no, of course, the cash paying patients, if they want private ward, it will be differential late. The rates. So we do not see any, like when the drug companies put these issues, we weathered the storm very well. Even this, I think we will come out of it well. Our growth strategy is in place uh, and the technological uh, advances will happen. Uh, I right. don't no, see any... Mr. No, no, Mr. Aj but, how, uh, but how is that, sir? Because if, if everything is uh, marked down to all procedures are standardized to uh, CGHS rates, there is a big difference, right? So yeah, how, how can really there be no impact? But we have yeah. to look at how the markdown will happen. What happens if mm. you are in the middle of a Bangalore city versus in a tier three cities? How will be the rates? Well, what happens if you use high technology? What will be the rate? So whole thing has to be revamped. And I think in the process, I do not feel that there'll be any significant difference because I always have said it is the margin. If you are in the low 20s margin, you can weather the storm. Maybe people yeah. who are at a high margin, they will have some issue. But as far as HCG is concerned, we don't see any implications on this. Negative implications uh, for us. So, Mr. Ajay Kumar, I'm just reading out from a brokerage report that is saying that uh, companies or hospitals will immediately incur EBITDA losses because of this. Uh, for your own business, you don't see that playing out? You don't see EBITDA losses in the near term? No, I do not. Definitely, I do not see any losses for us because we, we are margins we have are very reasonable and uh, we, I think we may be actually even very close to the CGHS rates the uh, majority of the time. So, I don't see any major implications of this in the near future. Okay. Uh, fair enough. And... Uh... But, but is this based off, I mean, the, the, this is based off the belief that, I mean, some kind of middle ground will be found by the time this is resolved? Or are you saying even in the worst case, you'll be largely unaffected? Yeah, in my view, you know, this is my personal view as far as HCG is concerned. I, I do not think we will see a significant erosion of our margins uh, or erosion of the EBITDA, the way we have structured it. Okay, got that. That's, that's good to hear. Now, uh, <clears throat> Let's just talk about the other thing, sir. Uh, there, there was a news, and we've discussed this earlier as well, uh, but there was a news report which, and we've asked you this, uh, you've uh, sort of not said uh, very much about it. This is the private equity uh, player wanting, looking to exit. A news report said that CVC is looking to exit uh, with its 60%, 60.4% uh, 60 stake. Uh, could, you, uh, could, could you tell us about this, sir? What's going on? What's the latest? I think, as I've said before, uh, CBC will be the best to answer. I do know mm. they have indicated they are uh, thinking about exit, but I would leave the answers to them. As far as I'm concerned, uh, they have been a very good partner for us, and we will continue to work with them. Uh, they have really come at a difficult time, and we have you know, grown very well after they came in as a partner. And uh, we look forward to working with them as long as uh, they are with us as a shareholder. Right. Okay. No, uh, you know, the reason I'm asking is that I'm, I'm assuming that you would also be in the loop because whoever buys it, I mean, you know, they'll, you, you'd be partnering with them, whoever is the new person who is in. So I'm yeah, assuming you have, a, you have an important say in the matter. So can you... Uh, one yeah. of the points uh, I am looking at if and when they exit, I would look at a partner who understands healthcare, who are there for a long-term call with us, to uh, participate in the growth, particularly in the focused approach of oncology. There is a tremendous uh, growth opportunity strategically and the need also. So I have indicated to them that uh, this is what I will be looking for because I, I will be staying as a promoter and a founder. So I hope, uh, you know, we and when they decide to leave, we will get a credible partner who will be with us for a long time. I will certainly work towards that to improve the medical excellence and the quality of care in oncology. Who is in the fray, Mr. Ajay Kumar? Are there other hospitals? Would you be comfortable? <laughs> no, I, I really another? don't know. It is too early. Yeah. No, but could it be, would it be okay with a hospital if another hospital, large hospital chain wants to buy in? I, I am agnostic. I look at the, what type of partner, what are the <laughs> conditions, what are the, you know, way the agreements are set up. As you know very well, uh, always the details is what we have to go into. So eventually, you know, that is what will decide what are the details, what kind of partnership they want, what is the. But if you had, future. let me 
no, got that. Let me let me put it this way: if you had a, if you had two and two options, one a hospital and another a financial entity, with exactly the equal terms, exactly same same terms, who would you prefer? For me, you know, it really doesn't matter. For me, whoever uh, wants to partner to bring oncology, but only thing is, I would like HCG to remain an independent entity. If there is okay. just strategic partner hospital, but they would like that or not, I'm not sure. For me, okay. HCG being a focused oncology uh, institution is very important. Okay, one final word on your fertility centers, Milan, which, uh, you know, have been under a bit of pressure. I mean, even in the quarter gone by, the revenues were down about 2 odd percent. What is the outlook over there? Uh, what's the way forward? Yeah, we have revamped it. And in fact, uh, we have done fairly well closing this March and we think there is a growth opportunity. But also, we have made it very clear uh, the right pricing, we'll try to divest it. So we are also looking at that to see whether, because we are an oncology focused uh, player, we would like to remain that going forward. So we are also looking at some of these alternatives of divesting uh, fertility. All right, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, well, that's Healthcare Global with uh, the standard procedure rates that the Supreme Court has directed the uh, you know, healthcare industry to move towards the impact of that on the business as well as the way forward on their own business.